Before we start this video, a large thank you to Ava, a name I cannot pronounce, Jose, Slim Shaggy, DJ, another name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. If someone knows how to pronounce these names in the comment section, please be sure to share. Kai Falcon, to Anthony, Max, Mattis, and Jacob for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a large thank you to Mike Harden Games for their immense support this month, this channel, on Patreon. Hello guys, and welcome to Lesson 2 in the State Machine. Today, we're going to make it so this guy right here can detect us. As you can see, he kind of just stands around there now, but we're going to make it so he has the ability to detect the player if the player is within line of sight and is not obstructed by an environmental object like a wall or something that's in the way. So, to do that, we're going to first jump into the idle state on the zombie, and we're going to start from there. But before I do that, I'm actually going to just make a wall by duplicating these blocks, and this will act as our environmental obstruction. So, if we're behind these blocks, he should not be able to see us because they are in the way. Okay, that looks fine. I'm just going to go over to the zombie now, and we're going to open up the idle state. And we'll start here. So the idle state is a precursor to the pursue target state. It is a state we are defaultly at, and it will be used to detect a potential target. Right now, the only target a zombie can have is the player. So let's make a function here called private void. I'm going to give it a very straightforward name. It's going to be called find a target via line of sight. Now we're going to be utilizing a few things in this function, and I'll explain everything uh, to the best of my ability and I'll comment it all so it's very straightforward. So first starting off we're going to need um, to scan the environment for some colliders because that's how we're going to find our player. So let's make an array of colliders. Let's call it colliders and we're going to say that's equal to <clears throat> physics and we're going to say dot overlap sphere and then we're going to start that sphere at the transform of the zombie which is just transform not position and then we're going to give it a radius. So Let's make a variable for the radius up here. We can call that detection radius. And all this does is it instantiates uh, an invisible sphere around the zombie with the given radius. And if any colliders are within that sphere's radius, it's going to add them to this list. But we're going to do one even better. So I'm going to call this first detection radius. I'm going to initialize it at 5. So let's just put that there. But then we're also going to add a layer to it, a layer mask. So what this does is it will only search for colliders on a certain layer. This just basically saves memory because it's only going to scan for things uh, with the given layers. Let's make a serialized field here called layer mask. I'm going to call it detection layer. And we'll put that in here as detection layer. So if we put the player on a certain level, it will only scan for um, colliders on the same layer as the player, which is great. Then we're going to make a for, um, a for statement here. We're just going to say... For every uh, i is equal to zero, colliders out length. So for every collider we have found or located, we're going to try to search for a player manager variable. We're just going to call it player, and we're going to say it equals colliders i dot transform dot get component player manager. And all that means is like for every collider we do we do locate, we're going to try to search that collider for a player manager script. There should only be one of these anyway, regardless right now. So uh, that's fine. Now I'm going to make some comments here, so if we come back to this later, we know exactly what's happening. I'm going to say we are searching all colliders on the layer of the player. Uh, actually, for the player, I'm just going to capitalize that with a certain radius. Very straightforward. And right here, I'm just going to put a comment again. Actually, yeah, we'll put a comment here too, just to be super clear. Then we're going to say for every collider that we find that is on the same layer, of the player, I'm just going to say we try and search it for a player manager script. And that's it. So, so far, so good. Okay, next, we're just going to make an if statement. We're going to say if the player does not equal null. So basically, if we have found a player manager script, so we have found a player, we're going to do some logic in here. We want to set up a viewable angle for the zombie. Um, I'm just going to put a comment up here. If the player manager is detected, then we then check for line of sight. So this means the player has to be in front of the zombie character. So then we'll put a comment here saying the target must be in front of us. And then let's make a vector three target direction. Then we're initialize that at transform.position being the transform of the zombie minus the player dot transform dot position. This new autocomplete function on the new Visual Studio is fantastic. And then we're going to say float viewable angle is equal to 
vector three dot angle, then in brackets, we're going to say our target direction and then our transform dot forward. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to make a minimum and a maximum uh, angle because you have a minimum angle out of your field of view and a maximum. So we're going to say if the viewable angle is greater than our minimum angle, let's make a variable for that so we can change it on the fly. So I'm actually going to make a couple headers too to make this a bit neater. First, I will come down here and I'm going to make a serializable field. Let's make it a float. I will call it minimum detection angle. Let's call it radius actually, radius angle. And we'll initialize that at say uh, minus 35. I think I'll have to make it a bit smaller than that, but we'll try that for now. And now I'm gonna make another one for maximum detection radius angle. Put that at positive 35. And then I will make a header. Let's call this detection angle radius. And let's give these other things some headers too. Um, I'll just make a header for this just called detection radius. Now the difference between the detection radius and the angle radius is the radius is uh, the distance at which we can see a target, but the angle radius is where we can see it in our field of view. So if a target is within detection radius, but not within our target's field of view, we won't see it. So we need two of these variables because one is for how far away we can see it, and the other is for how we can see it in our field of view. Think like eyesight, line of sight. Okay. And we'll put our layer mask up here and I'll just make a header for this too, just to keep everything nice and neat and consistent. I will call this the detection layer. That looks great. Let's put this, the layer used in detection potential attack targets. I know I'm commenting <laughs> a lot of this, but that's the kind of trend I want to keep in the series. I'm trying to over explain everything. This will be a lot more user friendly than something like my dark Souls series. So um, I'm gonna say if viewable angle is greater than our minimum detection angle and less than our maximum, so that will put us right in between that field of view, then basically we pass this check and then we can assign the player as the zombie's target. So down here, we would need a way to do that first because we don't really have a way to assign a target. We have all the means to find a target, but now let's make a way to actually assign the target ourselves. So for that to happen, we need to go to the zombie manager script because that's where we're gonna store our target. You can put it somewhere else if you'd like. I'm going to put it here. Um, I'm also going to make a serializable field. Actually, no, we're going to make this one public because we have to actually call upon this from separate scripts. So we're going to make this public. I'm going to make it a type variable of player manager. I'm just going to call it current target because right now a zombie's only target to attack me a player. I'm going to put a header here. Just call that current target. So we can see it in the inspector. Nice and neat. I'm going to put a header up here and call this one current state to make our inspector look a bit nicer. Okay, now we can do this a couple of ways. Right now, when we call upon our state, we actually don't need to pass anything. Um, we're gonna change that. You see our tick here. I wanna make it so we have to pass a zombie manager because the zombie is gonna be the only creature running the state or these states rather. And this is a state machine for a zombie. So let's pass the zombie manager. Go to your base class state. And right here where it says public virtual state tick, make it so we have to pass a zombie manager script just call it zombie manager. And then it's going to affect your two other states, uh, your idle and your pursue target. Just go there and basically paste those in there too. So those have to be passed as well. And then basically all that means is where we call this script, we have to make sure we include a reference to a zombie manager. And since we're calling this on our zombie manager, we can just type in this because we're referencing this zombie manager. And now with that, we can access this zombie manager script from our states. That's what that means. We're able to you know, use this script now on other states. And that's gonna come in handy because now on our idle state, we can simply say zombie manager dot current target. Oh, we gotta pass this right here. Uh, zombie manager dot current target will be equal to the player if it passes all these checks. There we go. And that is how you will do detection. And now we can actually call upon this function in our tick function right above. So up here, you can see we have these old debug.log messages from the previous video. Instead of has target now, we can actually erase this bool because that was just for testing purposes. Um, we can keep this though, and we can just say if zombie manager dot current target does not equal null, then we have a target and we're gonna move to our pursue target state where we go ahead and chase that target. If we don't have a target, however, we simply call upon the find a target via line of sight function. And we pass our zombie manager 
so that if we have one, we can assign the target to the zombie manager script, and that's it. We're good to go. But we're not done yet, because right now we don't check for obstructions in the environment. So let's make a comment here. We're going to call this check one last time for, you could say obstructions, you could say, I'm just going to say objects or object blocking um, view. And there's actually a very simple handy bit of code we can use for this. Um, it's called if, it's an if statement for physics dot, I think it's called line cast. And if you read this here, it returns uh, true if something between point A and B is blocking it. That's perfect for what we want to do. So if there is an object between line A, uh, between point A and B, between the zombie and the player, it will return true, which means there's something in the way we cannot assign this as a target. Now, before we do that, we can't just pass it between our character and our player because it'll go into the floor, basically, because we're referencing the transform of these scripts, not the model themselves. So what that means is basically the ray cast line would start at their feet. We don't want that. We want it to start at like their chest or their head. So we can easily remedy that by using a transform or just making a new vector three uh, and raising the Y value because the Y is the height. So all we're gonna do is pass two vectors here for our line cast, our player start point or zombie start point. And then we're gonna pass out and we're gonna need to make a ray cast hit variable to store the information. So we're gonna say ray cast hit, hit. And this is just a variable that tells us if uh, it stores information on what we hit. And we're gonna pass our player start point and our zombie start point. So what does the player start point equal? Well. The player start point is going to equal vector three. We're going to open the brackets. We're going to say player transform dot position dot x because we're not changing the x value. We're only looking after the y value. Now the y value is just the height. So we want to put it a bit above the ground. So let's actually make a variable here right now. Let's call it float. Let's just call this character height. Let's initialize that at say two. Might, that might be a little bit too big. I'm thinking 1.8 f will be fine, but we'll try that for now. We'll say character height. And then we're going to say player dot transform dot position dot z whoops that's transform dot position dot z and that's actually supposed to be new vector three and we can copy this now and do the exact same thing for the zombie but instead of saying player uh, dot transform dot position dot whatever we'll just say transform dot position because that references the transform of this game object which is the zombie and that will work just fine now when we're doing a line cast we're gonna start at the zombies and the players coordinate but we're gonna start it two points up from the ground of where it is. I'm just going to make a comment here saying this just makes it so our ray cast does not start from the floor. That's all. It's taking the same position but adding some height to it. Alternatively, you can make a transform on it on both the characters and pass that instead, but I find this is easier because you're not having to make another game object and reference that. So if this physics.line cast returns to true, we're going to not do anything because we cannot find the target. It's hit something. If it does not hit something, so it returns false, then we're going to pass our zombie manager dot current target equals our player. We're assigning that to our zombie manager. Very simple, very straightforward. I'm just going to make a debug dot draw line here so we can see this line. I'm going to make it from the player start point to the zombie start point. And let's see if we can change the color. I'll make it color dot yellow. That's fine. And that works out all good. And then I'm going to add a new layer here. I'm going to call the layer player. And then I'm going to go to the player game object. And I'm just going to assign it the player layer. And I'm going to make sure this detection layer is set to player on the zombies idle state. That looks good. I'm actually going to add the detection radius two to 30 to make it really large so we can really get the player and make sure we get it when we're in the scene. I'm going to make the minimum minus 50 and the maximum 50. I'm going to have to change that here, though, because I don't think it changes in the inspector if you change it in the scripts. It does not. So let's make that minus 50 and 50. We might have to play up these values because I'm, I'm just assuming these are the same from another test project I've done in the past. Um, all right, so I got a debug message here. Here's we're checking for the colliders. If we, if we pass that check and we find the player manager script, it says we have found the player collider. If we pass that check, and then we get, so if we pass the check of finding the player manager script, we get into the next check, which is passing the viewable angle check. It says we have passed the field of view check, which means we are within the viewable angles when we have a player manager script. And lastly, if there's something in the way, it will say there is something in the way. If there's no object in the way, it's, it'll say we have a target. So this is how we're gonna debug something if something goes wrong. So I'm gonna start the game up here right now, and you can see, Okay, so it says we are checking the colliders and it says we have found the player collider. So the game knows we're here. We're within the radius of, the, we're within the detection radius. But we're not within field of view, which is incorrect because 
we are in front of the zombie and the zombie is facing that direction. So we should be within field of view, but we should be obstructed. So I'm just going to walk around him here now. If I go behind him, yeah, okay. So right there, apparently that angle that I, I gave, the minimum maximum, is is uh, referencing the rear of the zombie. So I'm just going to hit or type in debug.log. And I'm going to debug.log our viewable angle. And then I'm just going to say right in front of that, I'm going to put um, a quote here saying, viewable angle equals, and then I'll put a plus here, and this will pass the viewable angle plus that text to the console. Okay, so here we go. The viewable angle is 179. We're dead in front of the zombie right now, so I guess right in front of the zombie will be 180. So that's probably going to be our maximum. I'm just going to walk around the right and the left of the zombie and see how this changes. So yeah, it's going down, and if I go right to the edge of his field of view on, the, on his peripherals, it's about 109. So it should be the same thing over here. Yeah, all right, so it's about, it's about 109. If you want to make it just for even sake, you can say 100. So the minimum should be 100, and the maximum should be 180. And that should work out perfectly. So I'm going to change that in Inspector now. And that's how you just debug the angle if it's not working. I'm going to put that to 100 and this one to 180. So 100 and 180. The debug.log is your best friend when trying to debug things like this. You should get used to using it if you're not already. I'm going to erase that now because we have that. We know that that's all good. Now I'm going to back in the game. All right, so... Here we go. We, we've looked for the collider. We find the player collider. We pass the field of view check, so we're right in front of it, but there is something in the way. This is perfect. That And the zombie doesn't have us as a target. You see this yellow ray above my head here? That is the check. And as you can see, it's bringing up this object, so we're not actually in field of view. And there we go. As soon as we become unobstructed, the zombie has us as a target. There you go, guys. You have a fully functioning uh, field of view detection system that will actually not give a target if there is an object in the way. This can be used for many things, uh, like looking for a lock-on target in games that require lock-on, for example. But it is the first and most important step to our AI zombie state machine, which will link us into the state of pursuing the targets. So in the next video, we're going to make it so if the zombie has us as a target, he will follow us and try to get close enough for an attack. If you guys did like the video, please drop a like and leave a comment. It genuinely helps my series out so much. It does something to the algorithm so other people see my video. And if you're feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next episode.